Hi everyone, hope you're all well. In today's video, we're going to talk about HTTP 500 errors. We'll discuss what they are, what causes them, as well as some tips on how to reduce them occurring on your website as much as possible. So a HTTP 500 error, also known as a 500 internal server error, it's basically a status code that ind indicates a problem on the server side while attempting to fulfill a request made by a client, such as a web browser. The error su uh, suggests that something went wrong within the server, preventing it from processing the request and, it gener and generating a val valid response. Um, HTTP, 500, HTTP 500 error is a generic error message, and it doesn't uh, provide a specific detail about the exact nature of the problem, so it could be caused by various factors such as programming errors, server misconfigurations, uh, security restrictions, database issues, any resource limitations, conflict with our software running on the, on the server, and server overload. For users accessing a website um, or website or service, um, they could use uh, a 500 error may look like something like this. So this may look familiar to you, but it'll say something like this page isn't working. It'll say the domain name or whatever the page URL is, and it'll say it's currently unable to handle the request. And there you have the HTTP 500 error. Um, so you can see it doesn't give you a lot of details to what's actually happening, just that there's something wrong on the server side of things. So as mentioned before, there's lots of reasons why a 500 error has happened. Um, one of the reasons is programming errors. So bugs or mistakes in the server-side code can trigger a 500 error, and this might include syntax errors, incorrect function calls, or flawed logic within the code. Um, with server misconfigurations, it just means uh, things like incorrect file permissions, uh, misconfigured server software, or incompatible modules. Um, all of that can result in a 500 error. Problems with the database server, like connectivity issues, misconfigured database settings, or corrupted data can lead to 500 errors. Um, and then inf insufficient server resources, like CPU, memory, or disk space, can cause the server to encounter errors and respond with the 500 status code. Um, incompatibilities or conflicts between different software components can cause them as well. Um, and if the server relies on external de dependencies, like libraries or APIs, issues with those dependencies uh, can result in 500 error as well. Um, and excessive traffic or requests overwhelming the service capacity will result in a 500 error. And lastly, security measures like overly strict permissions, firewall rules, or security modules can sometimes block the server from fulfilling the request and generate a 500 error as well. These are just a few examples of potential causes for 500 errors. It's worth noting that the specific cause can vary depending on the server configuration, uh, the program languages or framework that's being used, and the nature of the application or website being processed as well. Troubleshooting and resolving the issue often require examining server logs, error messages, and investigating the specific circumstances surrounding the error as well. So as a user, what um, there's several, several steps that you can take if you, act, if you encounter a website um, with an HTTP 500 error. Um, one thing that you want to do first is just refresh the page. Um, sometimes the error can be temporary or caused by a mo momentary glitch. Reloading the page can help determine if the error is persists or if it was a temporary issue. You want to check for any uh, maintenance or downtime announcements. So the website or service may be undergoing planned maintenance or experiencing planned downtime. So look for any announcements or, or status update, updates on their official like social media accounts or any emails that they might have sent over as well. Uh, cached or corrupted data in the browser can sometimes cause issues. Clearing the cache and cookies can help ensure that the browser fetches fresh data from the server as well. And if the error persists, try accessing the website or service using a different web browser or device. This can help determine if the issue is specific to the current browser or device being used. If the HTTP error continues uh, to occur, it's best to reach out to the website admin or support team. They can provide specific guidance, investigate the issue from their end, and potentially resolve the problem as well. It's good to provide them as with as much detail as possible, including the steps you took and any error messages you might have encountered. And sometimes it's just best to wait and try again later. Sometimes the server may be temporarily overloaded or experiencing issues that the be that's beyond the user's control. In such cases, it's, available, it's advisable to wait for some time and not try accessing the website or service again later. 
So what to do if you're the website owner? Uh, the main thing that you want to do is check for server logs. So start by examining the server logs to gather information about the error. Look for any specific error messages or stack traces that can be uh, provide that can provide insights into the cause of the problem. Server logs can often be found in the server's file system or accessed through a control panel as well, provided by your hosting provider. Um, and you want to check if there's any recent changes that were made to the website, such as uh, updates to the code, configurations, or server settings. Changes could introduce new bugs or conflicts that may lead to a 500 error, so you want to roll back any recent changes or review them carefully to identify any potential issues. Also, you want to check if the server has enough resources, so things like CPU, memory, disk space, and to handle the website's traffic and requests. Resource limitations can cause server errors, so you want to consider optimizing your website's code, database queries, or upgrading server resources if necessary. Uh, review and debug any server-side code that's responsible for processing the request that triggers the error. You want to look for programming errors like syntax issues or any kind of logical flaws. So use appropriate debugging techniques and tools to identify the and fix the problem. If your website relies on external libraries, um, APIs, or services, check if any recent changes or updates to these uh, dependencies have caused compatibility issues. Verify that the versions being used are compatible and that the dependencies are accessible and functional and functioning properly. Um, and you want to review server configurations, including web server settings, security modules, and permission. Ensure that they are correctly set up and not causing conflicts either. Um, keep monitoring your server tools to track you know, server health, performance, and errors, and they can help you identify patterns um, or recurring issues that contribute to the errors. Um, monitoring ca can provide valuable insights for troubleshooting and preventative measures as well. If, you're ne if it's needed and you're unable to identify or resolve the issue on your own, consider seeking assistance from experienced developers, system admin, or your, own host or your hosting provider's support team. They can provide specialized expertise and guidance to troubleshoot and resolve complex errors. And lastly, if the issue persists or affects users, communicate the problem and its status to your website users through appropriate channels. You want to provide updates on the progress of resolving the issue and any workarounds if available. It's really crucial to have regular backups and web of your website and its data before implementing any changes or fixes, and it's advisable to create a backup to ensure you can revert to a stable version if needed. Handling HTTP 500 errors requires a systematic approach and may vary depending on the specific technologies and platforms used on your website. So does it affect SEO? HTTP 500 errors can potentially have an impact on your search engine optimization if they persist for a long, prolonged period or occur frequently. So one way it can affect your SEO is through user experience. These errors negatively impact UX as they prevent users from accessing the requested content when they asked for it. If users consistently encounter these errors, they'll become frustrated and they'll abandon your website, and this will result in really high bounce rates. High bounce rates and poor user engagement metrics can indirectly affect your SEO. When search engine bots encounter a 500 error while crawling your website, it can disrupt the indexing process. If the error persists or affects critical pages, search engines may have difficulty accessing and indexing your content accurately, uh, leading to potential negative impacts on search visibility. While a single HTTP 500 error might not have a significant impact on search engine rankings, a pattern of recurring errors can raise concerns for search engines if search engines detect that a website frequent that a website frequently experiences server errors. They may perceive it as an indicator of poor quality, which could affect its rankings. Search engines allocate a certain amount of resources known as a crawling budget to crawl and index websites, and if a significant portion of the crawling budget is consumed by encountering HTTP 500 errors, search engines may allocate fewer resources to crawl and index your other pages, and this can impact the visibility of new and updated content in search results. So how to mitigate potential SEO impact of HTTP errors? The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you investigate the root causes of the errors and apply fixes as, as soon as possible. Regularly test your website functionality to ensure the issues have been resolved as well. It's also good to keep an eye on server logs, website performance, and error reports to promptly identify and address any uh, 500 errors that arise. And keep track of your website's SEO metrics, including organic traffic, rankings, and user engagement. 
If you notice a significant decline or anomalies, investigate whether HTTP 500 could be a contributing factor. And if you encounter prolonged or recurring 500 errors that impact your website's indexing, consider using tools like Google Search Console to inform search engines about the issue. This can help them understand that the errors are being addressed and potentially minimize their impact on social search rankings as well. It's important to note that occasional HTTP 500 errors may occur on websites and search engines understand that such issues do happen. What matters most is how you promptly you address and resolve these errors to maintain a positive user experience and minimize any potential SEO impact as well. So here are some tips to minimize HTTP errors on your website. Um, the first thing that you want to do is validate user input, which basically just means to validate and sanitize user input to prevent any errors caused by malicious data or incorrect data. Implement server-side validation and ensure that user submitted data adheres to expected formats and constraints. You want to use proper error handling, so implement uh, robust error handling, handling me mechanisms within your website's code and catch and handle errors um, promptly by providing pr informative error messages to users when any issues arise. You want to test your th code thoroughly um, and you also want to test your website across different browsers, different devices and user scenarios as well. Test various functionalities like forms and user interactions to identify and fix any issues that can cause the errors. Regularly monitor your server's performance and resource usage to ensure that your server has sufficient resources to handle the expected traffic and requests. You want to implement monitoring tools or services that can alert you to, pr alert you to potential server issues before they result in errors. And always keep your website software, CMS, and plugins up to date. Uh, outdated or incompatible software versions can introduce vulnerabilities and more errors as well. So regularly apply security patches and updates provided by software developers as well. Um, you want to utilize caching mechanisms to reduce server load and improve website performance. Caching static resor resources and frequently accessing data can help minimize the number of requests to the server and reduce the chance of errors as well. Um, and lastly, you want to monitor and er analyze your error logs consistently and continuously to identify any kind of recurring errors or patterns and investigate and address the root causes of frequent errors to prevent their occurrence. As mentioned before, it is normal to have the occasional uh, server dropout, um, but it's really good practice to kind of try and reduce the occurrence of them and improve your website's overall uh, reliability and performance as well.